Welcome as we continue in our Bible study here in 1 Peter, and we are looking today at 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 14 through 21. Now, it's kind of a long section here, and I want to read it, but then we just want to give the main concepts of what's going on here. He says, As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, so also you be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your fathers, forefathers, not with imperishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot, he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. You see that at the very end, he says, I want your faith and your hope to be ultimately in God, not in your surrounding situations, but in God. And if our faith and hope is in God, it should be uh, lead us to do two things. The first one is found in verses 14 through 16, and that is we are called to live holy lives. In light of seeing the great salvation, we are to live holy lives. He tells us that uh, you're going to be living in, a, in difficult times. People may mock you and you may have persecution, fear of being different. But he says, listen, th these are things that may happen, but you need to live obedient lives. You need to be obedient children. You need to be holy in how you live. Don't rationalize uh, doing what you want to do. We're very good at doing that. We're very good at rationalizing uh, what we want. We might, might not tolerate it in others, but we want it, and so we can rationalize our thoughts, our actions, our attitudes. Um, but he says, you need to be holy. And, and the reason is because we are called to be in the image of Christ. We are being conformed to the image of Christ. And he tells us that because we're called to be, in, to be conformed to the image of Christ, we are to be holy. Why? Because God is holy. That's what he says. You shall be holy for I am holy. God is separate from sin. He, is, uh, ab he abhors all that which goes against his holy will. And uh, the way that he has created us and made us. The world knows nothing of this. The world does what is right in their own eyes. And that progresses and changes according to the, the whims, the desires, the feelings of the age. But we are called to live lives that are holy. It is written this way, and God himself doesn't change. Not only are we called to live holy, second of all, we are called to live reverently. Reverently. Look at verse 17. And if he call, and if you call on him as father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear. So we're to live reverently. When you when you fear something, you revere it. You you have a a sense of awe about it. But you want to be very, very careful in what you're doing. I I I have a certain fear of electricity. Um, I, I love it. I'm thankful for it. It's uh, running uh, all the equipment here in this room. Um, but, you know, there's a fear. And is, is this is this wire hot or not? Is it, you know, it, it, I, I don't want to just touch uh, a, a down power line. Uh, I, I want to be careful. I want to live in fear. And so I... I will respect it and, and keep a safe distance uh, because of that. And so here with God, we are called to live our time in our exile with fear. So the time of exile is the time we are here on earth. We're to live it in fear. And he, he tells you why you're to do this. Um, 
you're to do this because of the cost. You know, you were ransomed. You were ransomed from these feudal ways, not with gold and silver. Those things perish, but with the precious blood of Christ. When you, when you get something that you have worked hard for, you take care of it. When you have something that you spent a lot of money on and you put a lot of time and effort into it, you take care of it. If you work for 15 years saving for a, 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 your favorite vehicle, you don't take it out and uh, park it next to uh, the place where they return the, the carts, do you? Uh, you see people that have those beautiful cars. Many times they park those things far away. Why? Because it's precious to them because they've spent a lot of money on it or at least taken out a large loan for it. Here we see the precious blood of Christ was spilled for us and we're to live reverently. And, and Christ was foreknown before the foundation of the world and Christ, God raised him from the dead. Uh, and gave him glory. And he did this, and this is what we come back to, so that the result of all of this is that our faith and our hope would be in God. There are a lot of things that we can put our faith and hope in, uh, but ultimately those things will fail. We need to place our faith and our hope in God. As a Christian living today, I think we need this just as much as Christians living in the first century need it. We need to find our hope in God. Look to Him. Uh, though the world around you may crumble, though we may face persecution, find our hope in God. Take some time today and meditate on that. Think about that. And I hope the Lord will richly bless you today because you find your hope in God. Living a life that is holy and reverent to Him, find your hope in God.